the beautiful thing about bug bounties is that you no longer have to hack on these bug bounty programs with this black box approach of not knowing any information about their web assets and how their assets and applications work. And now recently, you can actually make money from hacking WordPress sites and more specifically, finding vulnerabilities in their plugins. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, how you can just put your code review skills to make some money. And later down in the video, I'm going to show you one of my favorite vulnerabilities that I actually use and leverage in a recent pen test to be able to get access to this company's infrastructure. But before we do that, let's talk about the bug bounty aspect of making money from these WordPress plugins. Well, if you're not familiar, WordFence is a security platform mostly dedicated to WordPress security, and they have actually launched a bug bounty program that rewards you based on the plugins that you find vulnerabilities in. So they've actually paid almost close to $250,000 in the recent years since they launched in November, I think, of last year, and they've actually awarded over $1,300 in scope assets. And if that's kind of weird of saying in scope assets, let me explain what that means. The in scope assets could be any themes or any plugins that have a certain amount of downloads and that certain amount of downloads puts you in a different tier. So let me explain that very quickly. When you start on this bug bounty program, you are put into the standard researchers tier. That means that your brand new hacker you just registered in, you can only send submissions with 50,000 more downloads and active installations. Then you move on to the next tier, which is anything with 15,000 active installations. So all these different themes and different plugins become more available to you so you can hack on more of them. And then your top tier, which is the 1337 researcher or the lead researchers can actually do up to 30 reports pending at any time, but also you can actually look at all these different plugins and the themes that are over a thousand active installations. So the more and more you hack, the more and more plugins are available to you. And that requirement for each of these installations kind of just gets lower and lower and you get different perks and things like that as well. So that's kind of how the bug bounty parts of it works. And the really cool thing about these themes and these plugins with WordPress and even WordPress itself is that everything is open source all you have to do is go to the wordpress website look at the stats see if they fall in any of those different tiers download the plugin or the theme open it up in your ide and then just look for vulnerabilities submit a working poc so something that shows there is a vulnerability here and something that no one else has found in the past so it's not a duplicate and then not only they will pay you for it they will also assign a cve so you can put it on your resume or just take credit for your work on top of that bounty itself so that's kind of how the bug bounty thing works. And now what I want to do is I kind of put this CTF together. Unfortunately, this wasn't a vulnerability that I found or reported for a CVE, but it was very, very similar to what I did on a recent pen test a couple of months ago and kind of how we got into this company's infrastructure and how we came about it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up our example and kind of walk you through what would I do if A, I don't just have a plugin I want to hack on. Maybe I'm just going after this company's infrastructure for a bug bounty and a pen test, how do I identify the different plugins and what do we do to find vulnerabilities? Or maybe you can just find a known vulnerability for some of these plugins. So let's quickly jump into it. So just remember, as always, you can go on Hacking Hub and follow along if you want. This is a free hub on there. All you have to do is look for the WordPress Hacking Hub and you're going to bring up this website right here that we have in front of us. This is kind of our CTF or challenge or whatever you want to call it. And one of the first things that I usually do is just browsing and clicking around is but but the first thing you want to do before all of that is you want to kind of make sure you have your uh, dom open right here and you want to just look for the keyword plugins this is kind of how you can manually look for the different plugins and if you click on a page that is related to one if you have that already highlighted you can see that it's going to bring up the plugins page or the plugins url right here that shows this is the plugin that they're using and the version for it is right there and and most of the time if you type this into the address bar and put in readme.txt it's going to bring you the readme for it most people forget to actually delete this and it is a good place to get some information about what you're hacking on and looks like right here it is the stable tag add version 503 and this is called the wp form plugin you can also just run a tool i think there is a couple of them you can use there is a wp scan you can just run it on this company or it's going to come back and give you a list of all the themes and the plugins that are on there and then you can enumerate vulnerabilities based on that so in this case, we already found a backups page. And if we go right here, we can click and type in backup. There's a backup page that is throwing an error. It is giving us the path where the website is created. Again, this is a fake one because it's a CTF, but it's giving us some information. We knew there's a backup folder and things like backup.zip and 
source dot zip didn't work and nothing really was working out so what we were doing was okay let's just say screw it maybe we can just hack into this wordpress plugin immediately if you type in the plugin name it's going to bring you the wordpress side that's going to show you what that plugin is all about so for this example we're looking at this mwwp form if you look it up online it brings us here and it shows that there is 200,000 downloads which is a great one if you're especially looking for the bug bounty size of things and you can actually download this and you can just right click here and put the address in the address bar right there and you can see that it is going to download the 510 version of this but if you think about it we were looking at an older version and maybe this new version doesn't have the vulnerabilities in them so you want to make sure you want to download the the version that this company is using and we saw that in the readme so you can just actually rename this path right here into whatever version you want and it's going to just spit that out for you and download it as you can see where it downloaded this it's going to give it to you so keep that in mind if you're doing this just downloading random plugins to find vulns you want to just download the latest version but if you're hacking on a particular site you want to make sure those versions match because a newer version may not have the same vulnerabilities or the same code as the previous ones so now that we have it we can actually open something our id and we have the source for it and we can kind of go around and see the snippet of code that is actually vulnerable here which i'll bring up the blog post that talks about it but the moral of the story with this vulnerability is that it allows you to delete any arbitrary files that are on the server as long as you know the absolute path to it so if you know where the hosted website is and you know where the file that you want to delete is you can just delete it and you'll be done one of the better approaches to hacking these kinds of wordpress plugins is always to draw inspiration from other vulnerabilities that may have been found in a similar plugin so in this case i'm going to actually look for this plugin because i already know this vulnerability exists but but if you look at a particular plugin you can see there's a theme here and how often vulnerabilities have been found so in this case you can see there's a stored xss kind of a weird one you know you still see xss once in a while but you can see there's a bunch of arbitrary file uploads file upload vulnerabilities directly traversal that has been just reported to this company so it's a really cool place to one look for previous vulnerabilities but also look for inspirations of patterns of mistakes that this specific plugin could make so now you can actually open this if I go into the one that I want to look, this is, we want to actually delete it, which was found on December 15th. So we can click on it. And this right here will bring the write up or the explanation for this vulnerability. And even further, if you just copy paste this into Google, you can probably find a bunch of articles that have been created on this one. And it looks like this one specifically has gotten a $1,275 bounty based on just finding the snippet of code that doesn't actually sanitize the user inputs and based on the snippet code we can see that this is what a vulnerability exists so again this was already previously been looked at if i pull this up on my id you can see that in this version this code still exists there's been no changes made to it and there's a comment that says hey delete the attachment file so which is pretty cool to know that this is what it exists but if you read this right here you can see that it says hey it is not actually uh, validating or sanitizing it so it's not looking at seeing hey is this a previous created file on wordpress for example wp config so there's no whitelisting and blacklisting and it just arbitrarily allows you to delete files from the server and you can look down here this is kind of what the malicious path looks like and if you have something like word friends it's probably going to protect you from it but if you don't then once you send that request out in the post request you can change the file parameter and delete whatever you want i know that may be a little bit weird to just uh follow along as i'm explaining and <laughs> reading over to this blog post so we're going to just actually switch over to the slab and i'm going to show you what it looks like right here so once we're going to open up this site we know this is where the plugin exists this is what the plugin does it just takes your name and then it just takes your experience for example you can say test one two three and then it's going to get a file from your server it could be your resume it could be a jpeg file whatever it is and once you push confirm it is going to actually upload this file into the server, but as soon as you send this message out, it's going to delete it. So it's just looking at, hey, is this file uploaded? Yes, once it is uploaded, we're gonna attach this into an email, send it out to whoever is supposed to see this, and then we're going to delete this file right here. So this is where the vulnerability exists because once you pass the file name for it, they wanna delete it, but what happens if you swap that out? So let's look at the request for this one and see what it kind of looks like in the back end. So let's quickly just make sure Kaido is open. We're going to start our forwarding right here, intercept. We're gonna say send. And as soon as we send this, this is what the content looks like. And right here under CV, this is the file that it wants to delete. So if we send this to repeater and we push delete, this file is going to get deleted. I'm not gonna get an error message from it, but it's gonna show that this file has been edited or deleted. We can kind of look around at other files to delete, but 
Like, let me caution you, if you delete your index.php, you may probably break this website. So one of the things that I want to show here in this case is on the pendants that I was talking about, we had a similar situation where we could arbitrarily delete any images or any files based on our image uploader. It was a different plugin. But the moral of the story we're here was that we had a backup file that had an index file that we couldn't see the contents of the folder right here. So if you go to index.php, this is the error that I was giving. And we really needed this file to go away. So all you had to do was just grab this file path and give it to this right here. And as soon as you send that out, if this vulnerability still exists on this plugin, it is going to delete it. So let's send that out and we're going to hit send. And if we refresh, we can see that that index PHP has been removed. Obviously you can do the same thing to things like the index.php file. So if I do just this, I can just pass that to it. If the file exists, then it's going to get rid of it and we no longer can do anything to this web server. So that's kind of the gist of looking at this CTF level and kind of understanding how it works. I don't want to fully solve this, but I'm going to leave this off for you to figure out the rest. But in our case, once we had access to the entire source code, it allowed us to get access to the database. So you can see right here, I have phpMyAdmin open. It gave us access to the database where I could log in here, update the username and password for the admin, and then just get into the admin side and just pop a shell in there. I'm not going to solve this. I kind of want to leave this as a hint for you to go and figure out and see if you can get the actual flag from this box. But that was kind of what we did with our pen test when we found a similar approach to this. So when it comes down to looking at plugins, keep these in mind. One, you want to look at the version, make sure it matches the one on the website. If there is no vulnerabilities, even better, go look for a vulnerability. You can report it to that bug bounty program to your pen test. But also if it's one of those plugins that has the minimum downloads, you can actually go ahead and report that to WorldFence and get paid for it. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you haven't already, do me a favor, drop me a comment. Let me know if you enjoy videos like this and what you want to see in the coming weeks, and I'll make sure to create those for you guys. All right, that's it. Peace. Oh, well, that's awkward. You're still here. Well, I just want to say, hey, we have a Discord channel. Come hang out. Go to discord.gg slash nahomsek. There's a ton of us there. I think it's like 20,000 of us. We're hanging out doing CTFs, hacking bug bounties, sharing things, and all the good stuff. I'll see you there. Seriously, come hang out. Peace.